The Bernese Oberland is one of Switzerland's loveliest natural regions. It's home to a wide variety of animal and plant species whose conservation is essential. The peaks of the Alps regulate the climate. Humid Atlantic air collides with the mountain faces, releasing rain. One of the most beautiful results of all this precipitation is the mountain lakes. Some, such as the Bach Alp Lake above Grindelwald, are frozen over until summer. Many of these magical places are extremely remote. A passing waterfowl with possibly a few fish eggs stuck to its feathers would rarely consider stopping here for a rest. So some of these lakes seem like submerged deserts. Famously, the weather in these mountains can change within minutes. Grey skies, misty, damp air and rain don't exactly gladden the heart, except for that of one rather special creature. The alpine salamander loves these conditions. It might be an alpine native, but that doesn't mean it's good at climbing. At 85% humidity level, these primarily nocturnal creatures will also venture forth during daytime. If it wants to get back to its cave, not even the sheerest rock face will put it off. And another try, nearly made it. Its sensitive skin, equipped with poisonous glands to protect it against predators, has to be kept moist. That's why it's important that it reaches its shelter when the weather turns fine. Before the sun comes out, the salamanders disappear without a trace until the next rains. The androsace vandellii wait for sunshine and the insects that appear with it. When yellow, the blossoms signal to the bees, I need pollinating. But when pink, the message is, fly on, there's nothing left here to fertilize. Alpine flowers need special strategies to survive the harsh conditions. This is one of the world's most famous flowers, the mythical Alpine Edelweiss. The typical sheen of the leaves around the bloom comes from tiny air bubbles that reflect the light, attracting insects and protecting the leaves from the fierce ultraviolet rays. When the yellow bellflower blossoms, it's doomed. Some can grow for up to 10 years before they blossom just once and then die. Fine hairs on alpine flowers protect them against the harmful UV light rays that are stronger in the mountains, as well as from dehydrating in the thin air and dry fern winds. Not all gentians have blue flowers. But its intense color gives it a high sun protection factor. And as a positive spin-off for the plant, bees find its blue color irresistible. The golden root doesn't need other rose root plants or insects to reproduce. At a pinch, it will do so on its own another way of adapting to the hardships of life in the mountains. 
These colorful alpine flowers look quite harmless, and yet they're specialists where it comes to sophisticated survival strategies. In Switzerland, these seemingly idyllic mountain pastures dotted with farmhouses are simply called the Alp. The milk from the cattle that graze here is turned into the world-renowned Alpine cheese. More than 100,000 dairy cows spend the Swiss summer on an Alp. Since the Bronze Age, farmers have been bringing their cattle to the mountains for the warmer season. The lush green meadows with their multitude of aromatic herbs suggest a natural biotope. But in fact, Alpine meadows are a man-made landscape. Without active cultivation and care, forests would once again encroach upon and overrun the meadows. In some regions, the ground is damp and very soft, and cows sink deep into the soil while grazing. So some farmers keep special cows. However formidable these creatures might look, Scottish Highland cattle are smaller and lighter than others of their species. They provide excellent meat, but unfortunately, not very much milk. The imposing Jungfrau Alec landscape is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The title is more than just an honor. It obligates Switzerland to protect this unique mountain region for future generations. But that's no easy task. Ninety percent of the area consists of rock and ice. Only during the summer months do the temperatures here on the almost three and a half thousand meter high Jungfrau Joch climb above zero. But even in July, they have 18 days of frost. Three large ice streams flow together in confluence below the Jungfrau Joch, forming a 900 meter thick ice shield. The Alpine glacier is estimated to be around two and a half million years old, but the eternal existence of this ice mass seems to be coming to an end. It is shrinking. Since 1850, the ice has shrunk back by a hundred meters. The cause is climate change, which has especially dramatic effects in the mountainous Alpine region. But also in the valley below, near Grindelwald, one can clearly see the effects of climate change. At the foot of the Mettenberg, many bushes are cloaked in a fine silk webbing. Many of these trees and bushes have also been munched completely bare. The ermine moth caterpillar has taken over here. It loves warm, dry conditions and profits greatly from climate change. The extensive silk covering protects them from rain and hungry predators. 
None of this disturbs the affected trees. As soon as the caterpillars turn into butterflies and fly off, the trees sprout new leaves. The ichneumon wasp is the caterpillar's greatest natural enemy. It deposits an egg inside a caterpillar with its ovipositor. The wasp larva hatches and grows inside the caterpillar, devouring it alive. But if the silk is too thick, the parasitic wasp has no chance. Its ovipositor cannot pierce it. Since the climate has warmed up, these webs are more common in the Alps, and larger areas are affected. In many valleys of the Bernese Oberland, there are streams, ponds, and lakes that are full of life. An ideal environment for tadpoles. Up in the mountains, it can take up to a year for tadpoles to develop into frogs. And then the baby frogs must survive the hard winters. But down below, everything's much faster. Warm sun and plenty of plant-based food reduce the tadpole's transformation period to a couple of weeks. As soon as its legs have grown, the future frog can easily be identified. But the tadpole still has gills like a fish and can't yet survive on land. Its final transformation goes against the current zeitgeist. It changes from being a vegetarian to a committed carnivore. Back in the icy highlands, There are some 5,000 glaciers across the Alps. After the oceans, glaciers are the largest repositories of water on the planet. They store almost three quarters of all fresh water. Their weight bends rocks and grinds down entire mountains. But they are shrinking. Since the mid-1800s, almost half of the glacier area in Switzerland has disappeared. The Black Lucina River now flows where, not long ago, the valley was filled with a thick mass of ice. Rock walls, ground smooth by the ice, bear witness to the old glacier. There is no end to climate change in sight. It's estimated that in some 80 years, only the mightiest glaciers will be left. The cause is global warming, both natural and man-made. Compared to the others, the Stein Glacier in the Susten Pass is an absolute sprinter. In just one year, it has retreated by more than 150 meters, making it one of Switzerland's fastest disappearing glaciers. A tragic record. The Stein Glacier is also an example of how hazardous the disappearance of glaciers can be. Landslides and ice avalanches can occur on the walls of the glacier as the retreating ice mass is no longer there to support the sheer rock. Even the meltwater can be dangerous. All over the Alps, new lakes have formed some empty themselves in catastrophic floods that cascade down into the valleys with tremendous destructive force. 
the upper Stein Lake has not yet broken its banks. The lower one has done so twice. Not far from the Stein Glacier, meltwater brooks meander across a plain. Here, a mysterious, though rather smaller scale disaster has occurred, a kind of natural crime scene. This little meltwater pond is full of corpses. What carried off these frogs en masse? A virus, perhaps? or the skin fungus that has been killing frogs all over the world? Creepy. Insect larvae and fish have also fallen victim to the sinister killer. So what happened? The answer to the gruesome riddle proves that nature is not cruel. It is just indifferent. Right in the middle of the frog's mating season, the meltwater pond suddenly froze solid. All the creatures suffocated. But the story does have a happy ending. Some of the frogs actually managed to mate before they died. Protected by the gelatinous frog spawn coating, many frog larvae survived the deadly frost. So in future, the Stein Glacier will still be home to frogs. Nature finds ways to sustain life. Humans should find ways to support nature in its efforts wherever possible to help the Bernese Oberland remain one of the greatest natural assets in Switzerland.